So what I want you to do is just put this baby into there. Oh. Yeah. So if you look at that kombucha and you think, <laughs> well, so you think, you think, well, the logical thing to think is, well, that, is that scoby thing there is the important part. <coughs> but actually the scoby thing is quite superficial. <laughs> You can actually make it with just the liquid part itself. <laughs> and then what you do is you just, so we're making a liter. So that's about 10%. That's, a, that's about 100 mil of starter tea. The tea part is the most important part. So you do not want to lose or spill that part. The scoby part is just bits of sugar. There is some bacteria and yeast in there, but this is your magic happening in this liquid. So what you want to do is then Fill this up. This is about a liter. We're going to be slightly under. So fill it up to about there. Yep. So that tea is made with two tea bags, a liter of tea, and a quarter of a cup of sugar. So hopefully you got those ratios right, or it's not going to work. Is it possible to put too much sugar in there? Or is it created a long time? Well, break? you probably could put more. But that's the recipe that's kind of tried and true. So if you put more <coughs> sugar, it might push the reaction slightly differently in terms of the flavors, the speed of the fermentation. But it, it could potentially work. Even if you double the sugar, maybe it will work. But maybe it won't be as consistent. Because this culture, we've fed it and trained it. The key thing with any fermentation is they're like humans. They're like things the same way all the time. They like the same temperature, they like the same food. As soon as you shock the culture, you change the environment or change the temperature, they, get, they almost go into a dormant state. They literally put a cap around themselves and fall asleep till they feel comfortable enough again to germinate. It's almost like forming seeds. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, yeah. yeah? Yeah, but this is bacteria. And so bacteria, when they go from this dormant state to back into a vegetative state, which is then growing again, there's a lag phase. So you'll always see that it might take a few days when you change the recipe for it to get back to its original potency. Does that make sense? So with this, I'm gonna leave this here for you guys too. I'm assuming he's got the ratios right. So if it doesn't work, <laughs> that's the reason why. And literally all you're doing is you're just putting a cloth over that. And just leaving that, that's a long fermentation. That's going to be around seven days. Jun is a bit different. So Jun is the honey ferment. So with Jun, the recipe is for one liter, you use two tea bags of green tea and a third of a cup of raw honey. Same process, you make the tea, you let it cool down, pour it into the jar, just like that one. I'll leave this for you guys to play with. So, Seven days. Seven days. So what? Another. Yes. So what you'll see is over the course of seven to ten days or so, depending on the temperature, is you'll see this kind of film forming on the top. And so you'll see it looks kind of weird at the start. You'll you'll see like little white specks or, or little dots, but that's a good thing. It just means that a new biofilm, which is this little scoby thing there, is forming on the top. And so what you do, it's the same thing. It's just like these fellows here. You take the top scoby out to reuse, and the bottom scoby that's left in there, you can just chuck it out, compost it, gift it, do whatever you want to do with it.